Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java and Raspberry Pi programming tutorial series. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at pyjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. Uh, this tutorial is basically a super easy servo control. I'm going to go ahead and open up my website here, right? pyjava.com, select Pi Programming, and I'm going to scroll down here to the super easy servo control tutorial in the Java SE edition stuff here. Okay, let's just click on that. So in this tutorial, I'll demonstrate a super easy way to create and run a Java program that will control a servo. In my last tutorial, I said I was going to demonstrate how to program Java native stuff. Well, I changed my mind. I'm going to keep things at a higher simple level until sometime in the future. So let's get started. We're going to hook up some wires and, um, and do some coding here. So just for reference here, and this is the wiring pi pinouts uh, diagram here. Today we're going to be dealing with this 5 volt pin out here, uh, the ground and pin 1. So the 5 volt coming out of the Raspberry Pi 3 is just basically direct, almost, well think of it just as directly from the power supply there. So we're going to get, uh, mine, uh, my power supply is like 2.1 amps, 5 volts, and so whatever the operating system is using minus that is what you'll get right through this 5 volt pin here, okay? So, um, I'm going to bring up my window with the servo here. So, right, so I've got this little, just uh, basically a little generic micro server here, servo here. Um, they're all pretty much standard there. You'll have like a darker wire, a red wire, and a, a lighter wire there. Uh, the, the darker wire is generally the ground wire there, and you might want to refer to the data sheet on your servo if you have one there. But that's generally the ground, and then the red in the middle is your hot wire, and then for your positive uh, flow. And then this, this uh, lighter color wire is generally for your pulse width modulation signal, which we're going to be generating today using Java, and it's all going to be very easy. Um, so we're going to be using pin 1 here, or I'm sorry, pin uh, the positive pin right here, this first one here. And then um, if you come back to the diagram, you can see we skip a pin and then the next pin over is going to be our ground, this one right here. And then we are going to, after we got that hooked up, skip three pins over and, I'm sorry, skip two pins over and place it on pin one. Okay, oop, look, there we go. So here a red, and I'll, I'll show you all that. We'll hook that up here as a matter of fact. Let's, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just do it right now, okay? So I am actually going to hook in the ground first here, right? And then I'm going to skip over two pins and put in my white wire, which is gonna be our signal wire. And then I'm going to put in the red wire on the first one there, okay? So uh, we always wanna just double check our stuff there. Um, from the angle of the camera, it looks like there's only one pin in between the uh, ground and the signal here, but there is in fact actually two pins there. So that looks good there. Um, let's bring back up the website there, just double check our stuff. Looks good to me. All right, let's uh, hop over to the Raspberry Pi here. And the first thing we're going to do is <coughs> Go ahead and, you know, I'm going to just re... No, okay. I'm going to open up this terminal window here. Type in uh, Maker Java, right? I already have that folder, but if you don't, it'll go ahead and create it for you. Then we'll change directories to the Java folder. Then I'll type in Maker, and I'm just going to call this uh, Servo Easy, okay? And we'll change directories to that Servo Easy folder, and I'm going to leaf pad. Uh, servo easy dot Java okay all right and um, I'm just gonna cut and paste that source code from the from the web website right into the in a notepad because nobody wants to watch me type all that stuff out and, da, da, all right let's go ahead and highlight that Control C to copy or right click and select copy, either or, and let's just go ahead and paste that in there. Okay, I'm not going to go over what this does right away here. We're just going to come up here and make sure that we save this. And of course, since 
since leaf pad is basically blocking down there, we're going to open up a another Raspberry Pi window here, change directories to the Java folder, change directories to the Servo Easy folder, type in Java C, Servo Easy Java to compile our stuff. Okay. And before I actually hit, well, I'm going to do Java and then Servo Easy to run that class. And I'm going to just leave that in the window over here. And I'm going to pull up this again here. And um, let's go ahead and hook up the rest of our wires here for our servo. So I'm going to hook in my ground wire first, which on this particular servo is going into the... Um, into the brownish wire on there, right? And then I'm going to bring this into the camera. This is going to twitch a little bit when I hook up this, uh, the five volt there, right? And so it just kind of went into like it's neutral position here. Okay, now we have nothing going on as far as our signal things there. So we'll just plug in our signal wire there on that, right? And so uh, that's, that's basically how we have this hooked up. Now that we have kind of power to this thing, right? Uh, it doesn't want to move. If you try to twist it, it'll it'll basically just be like, um, well, actually, never mind. I'll go over that later. Let's go ahead and just kind of get this into a smaller window so we can see kind of side by side there. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and hit enter on this. And what you're going to see there is it's going to... Um, Wait five seconds and then it's going to move to the right and then it's going to move back to the left and then it's going to just start moving from left to right over and over and over again. So um, let's talk about what this is actually doing now just a little bit here. I'm going to bring this over into here. <clears throat> And so these commands in my next tutorial, I'm going to go over what these actually do. But basically, this one right here, we're, we're um, telling it to, well, 152 will give us approximately a center. And don't change any of these other settings if you're messing around with this. In the next tutorial, I'm going to go over everything, talk about uh, the pulse widths that are necessary. But this is basically gives us almost like a 1.5 millisecond pulse width, which will put the servo at the center. And that's what popped up first. And then over to the turning it right, I told it to go to about a one millisecond pulse width and then turning the left to a 200. Okay. And then we were sleeping for five seconds, three seconds, three seconds. And now I'm um, just setting this simple little into I 100, which will put us all the way over to the right. And then just um, got this endless loop going here where I'm, I'm basically executing this GPIO command right here plus the current value of I, sleeping 10 milliseconds and then incrementing it here if it's turning left. This is simple little booing turning left, right? If it gets greater than 200, then I set turning left to false, which will start it turning back to right. And if it's less than 100, then I set it to true, okay? Um, so I am going to pop back to this window here. I'm gonna hit Control C, which will break us out of that little little looping thing that we got going on over there. Uh, now the 100 and 200 millisecond uh, pulse widths are pretty safe for every, every servo out there. This one can actually go down to less than that. Uh, this one can go, I was messing around with it, and I can take it all the way down to 53 and go all the way up to 242. And that is basically just doing these commands up, up here and seeing where the servo kind of started twitching, right? I mean, just do this little strange noise there. But anyway, so let's go ahead and come out here and save this. We'll recompile this and um, and go ahead and run it there. Okay, so you see it moved back to its like 90 degree new position, moved over to the right on 200, back to the left on that, and now you can see it's going much further in each direction than, than before there. So, um, I think that's about all I want to cover there. I'm going to go ahead and get that off screen there. And so, 
you know, I didn't go over a lot here. In my next tutorial, I'm going to go over really quite a bit of stuff. I'm going to go ahead and get that off screen there. What I'm going to cover next, my next tutorial, is basically talk about how all this is working there. Um, and I'll hook it up to the oscilloscope so you guys can actually see the waveforms. And uh, we'll go from there. Anyway, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.